Whether airmail or runaway dog, well, fishing failures or lamp fries. This is a classy comedy classic for the whole family. It's burning! So cue the deer and don't forget your pal Andy. Sheriff's office. Because it's time for funny farm filming location. And there's that distinctive archway there that the farmers pull out of for their journey northward to the country. Not allowed to take any photos or videos from inside. They come out of that back entrance there and head off to Redbud. Ice fishing. With high hopes and dreams, only to encounter one hilarious setback after another. Things eventually work out for the farmers. Eventually. Wow. This tree here, still standing, thriving. Amazing. That's awesome. Jay Cronley wrote the 1985 hit novel that was turned into the 1988 comedy classic that starred Chevy Chase and Madeline Smith. It's the ultimate fish out of water tale. And it received mixed reviews when it was first released. Eh, I've watched this movie dozens of times with my father. We love it. Laughed many a time watching it. Andy Farmer, who quit his job in New York City as a newspaper sports writer and moved to the country with his wife to start a family and write a novel. He ends up doing one of the two, and all is right with the world. First failed attempt. Yo! Hey! My dog, second failed attempt at making a friend. Hey! This is where Andy Farmer rolled the boulder up the hill in what was a last ditch effort to stop Crumb Petrie, the crazed drunken mailman, from flying by his driveway with reckless mail abandon, throwing his Obama. mail out the window. And right there, where my truck currently is parked, is where one of the representatives of Huffnagel and Brown pulled over and the boulder ended up rolling from here back down crashing into his brand new Lincoln Town Car and here's the driveway This is awesome. It's a Cape Cod style house here in Grafton, Vermont. Very peaceful community. And it looks like this is where he ran out. They're trying to match a couple of things up here. Oh, they happen to have a dog of their own. Maniac is our mailman. And I would imagine that's where the road was 
where Crump Petrie would totally disregard and bypass their mailbox and head off in that direction. This production. It's a beautiful piece of property up here. Once again, there's that pond where the, the chair was thrown in right there, along with a snake being fished out right there. What a surprise for Mrs. Farmer. Oh, poor Elizabeth, she tried hard. That's pretty amazing. Beautiful home. Featured in one of my favorite all time, featured in one of my all time favorite movies. Boy. Here's where all the town folk are lined up singing Christmas carols doing their best to earn that $50 bonus. These people were very friendly. They allowed me onto their property to do my thing. Thanks again, sir. Have a nice day. There's their wall again. I've seen cutting across their property. Is that yellow dog? Well, it's a dog and it is yellow and it's on what was Andy Farmer's property. Nick P was here exclusive. Right there is where the chair got tossed into the pond. And a snake got fished out. Where they hugged and embraced in the country air. A new home, a new start. Pretty amazing. That's where the Founders Day picnic banner was hung. Andy and Elizabeth Farmer drove into town and then they pulled down this street right here. Headed right down that street. And you see, you see that gazebo right there in the shot. That was actually built. That was a set built specifically for the movie and the town of towns in Vermont loved it so much they decided to keep it. Pretty sure as the story goes, a drunk driver crashed into this. It must have been along Crump Petrie's route and it needed to get rebuilt. You can see the stairs are facing the other side now. nonetheless. But yeah, this served 
as the town square for the movie. But you see the church in the background there. That building right there is actually an elementary school. Right here is where Chevy Chase pulled up with Madeline Smith to visit Ethel Dingus's antique shop. Which is right here, where the sign was set up, pulled over and parked in that 1955 English Roadster. Wow. goes off in this direction. Right over there, right over there is where I believe the Ivy Cafe was. Again, just a... Call me Mr. Lambfries. Just a structure built for the movie. Because it lines up right and uh, nothing else here makes any sense for it to serve as the, uh, the cafe. Tell them why yours are so tasty. Yeah, I'm gonna guess. The cafe is right there. Lamb fries. Now that's saying a mouthful. The sheriff who can't seem to drive straight pulls up, gets out of his car, forgets to put it in park, or turn the car off for that matter, and it rolls right down the street, onto the grass, into where the Christmas tree was decorated right over there. The car runs into it and knocks it over. This was all covered in artificial snow. And the artificial snow actually killed all the trees in the area except one. And that one is right there. That's why it's so much larger than the other surrounding trees. Yeah, the steps were facing the opposite direction. I don't know if it just put the steps on the other side for whatever reason. But pretty cool. Funny farm, town square, towns in Vermont. The pride of Wyndham County. Off to the next one. And he's still going! The Downers Bridge. Excuse me, the Downers Covered Bridge. Now anyone who knows the film knows that funny scene where lesser known actors, Michael Starr and Glenn Plummer, the movers in the movie, are taking the furniture truck are courageously going to attempt to take the furniture truck across the bridge. And uh, they, they are not successful in doing so, but they are successful in avoiding catastrophe. The farmers came driving down this road here and drove right through 
this covered bridge, which is featured in this classic cult comedy, or I should say cult comedy classic, or comedy, never mind, you get the idea. Now, I'm not sure, this built, this bridge has definitely been restored and rebuilt over the years. I'm not sure if they took it down altogether for that movie, for that movie scene, or uh, that was just trick photography to make it appear that it came down. But this is definitely the bridge featured in the film. This will become legendary filmmaker George Roy Hill's last movie. I believe he only directed 14 feature films in his time. Two of them happen to be in my top 10 all-time favorites. One is The Sting, the other is Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. Two movies that were set in the past, yet well ahead of their time. But anyway. Chevy Chase easily happens to be one of my all-time favorite actors. Caddyshack, Fletch, The Three Amigos, Spies Like Us, National Lampoons. Oh, you can't forget about nothing but trouble. And, and others. The list goes on and on. Let me know what your favorite Chevy Chase film is in the comments below. I'm going to figure out what went down here at the Downers Bridge. If you happen to be a resident and you know the story, drop that in the comment as well. My wife and others always said I would end up on a funny farm one day. Not sure that this is exactly what they had in mind, but in any case, I made it. This is where the fishing derby took place and what was supposed to be Andy's opportunity to make new friends, to bond on the pond, and catch some fish. We, we already know how the, the first attempt at fishing went for Andy <laughs> back at the house. Uh, yeah, it didn't go very well. Well, well, this didn't go much better. Ah! Hook, line, jump ship, and head for shore, Andy. He, gets, he comes out of water right between those two trees. And Madeline Smith is waiting right here when the good sheriff comes down this driveway. And this should be familiar to any Funny Farm fan. And you see that house in the background. And right in the middle of a driving lesson, calling out to Mrs. Farmer and failing to stop, proceeding along this pathway and finally coming to a stop in the pond, the pond breaking his car for him. That's a match. And the reason why the sheriff showed up here was to hand the farmers a $4,000 funeral bill for Claude Musselman, who happened to be dug up on their, <laughs> who happened to be dug up on their property. The bill even included traffic control. What? I love this movie. And this was one of the four Vermont towns. Redbud, the fictitious town of Redbud, consisted of. Right out there are where the docks were, which they are no longer there. There's a floating dock right now. That's about it. But yeah, you remember these trees in this shot. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, it's a great place. Definitely unplug. And my wife and I looked for a nice Green Mountain, Vermont spa getaway weekend for Labor Day. And we found a place. We have never been to Vermont. So we decided to go. And me, of course, doing my thing, I look up 
and research the surrounding area about things to see and places to go and that sort of thing. And what do I come up with? Yeah. Well, one of my favorite movies was filmed. So, you know me. I had to make time. And I did. To visit these locations. And this was a great experience. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed what you saw. If you've been to this channel before. You've definitely seen a filming location video or two already. And, uh... Go ahead and feel free to like, share, and subscribe if you are new to this channel, or not. That sounded like an acorn. And if I'm not mistaken, Redbud is, or was, the acorn capital of the world. How about that for timing? As long as it didn't land on my head, I'm alright with that. There's also a loose connection from Funny Farm to Ghostbusters, and it's, it's, a, it's actually a three-piece connection. It starts with actress Alice Drummond, who plays Ethel Dingus, the antique shop owner, Elmer Bernstein, the composer of both Funny Farm and Ghostbusters. And New York City. So we have Do Re Egon.